Hello there, my fellow Moderati, and welcome to another lore video from the universe of Warhammer 40k. Do you know what miniseries I haven't updated in quite a long time? The one involving the gigantic walkers of the Collegia Titanica, the mighty titans and their legios. I haven't done a lot of episodes on the titan legions, to begin with, but one way or another it is getting an important addition today. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the march of Legio Tempestus. This will also be the first Titan Legio that I cover on which I will make not one video, but two. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Legio Tempestus, also known as the Storm Lords, is a venerable and famous element of the Collegia Titanica, and its towering god engines were counted among the mightiest and most accomplished of the Emperor's crusading armies in the years before the Horus Heresy. They were also one of the three famous Triad Ferrum Morgulus, founded alongside the Legio Mortis and the Legio Ignatum in the distant Age of Strife on Mars. Throughout the blood-soaked insanity of that era, the Legio Tempesta stood firm against all foes, from machine mutant abominations to rival titan orders marching from their own strongholds into battle. Their home fortress, cut from the red basalt of Ascreus Mons, one of the mightiest of Mars's many volcanoes, remained inviolate. Much of the anarchy that befell Mars during that long age of strife is lost to history now, or sealed away in the forgotten data crypts beneath the industrial waste. What is known, however, is that a region claimed and defended by the Legio Tempestus bordered that of the Legio Mortis, also known as the Death's Heads, and on many occasions the two orders came to blows over territorial rights and access to the priceless caches of Archaeotech to be found beneath the rust ruins of the Tharsis region. The engines of these orders battled across the Oxide Deserts until, at length, the region was finally divided by the so-called Tempest Line. To cross this line in the sand was to unequivocally wage war, an act that the Legio Mortis initiated many more times than Tempestus, if rumor is to be believed. Although both orders shared a common enemy in the Psy Carnivora and other phantasms of old night, a deep and mutual loathing developed between them that later on would bear even more bitter fruit. With the coming of the Emperor to the Red Planet and the signing of the Treaty of Mars, the Legio Tempestus took their place in the glorious armies of all conquering humanity. The engines of the Tempestus would walk upon worlds the length and breadth of the ever-expanding Imperium, serving alongside some of the most celebrated armies of the Great Crusade. Individual maniples were detached to Mechanicum Explorator Fleets or Rogue Trader Militant Pathfinder Squadrons, but the bulk of the honors of the Legion were earned during service with the 12th Expeditionary Fleet, in what some later historians would call the Long March to Ultramar. Later on, when the Primarch Robot Gilliman took personal command of the 12th Expeditionary Fleet, the Tempestus played a pivotal role in the arduous wars of the Epsiloid Binary Cluster. It was during this mighty war that the Legion's master, Princeps Senioris Indias Cavallerio, would earn the title of Storm Lord, an honorific that would later be used by the Imperial soldiery to refer to the entire Legion, and was thought to echo ancient myths. The term itself was appropriate, because the Storm Lords had proven themselves masters of planetary assault under enemy fire. Cradled in the shielded holds of the very heaviest classes of transports, the Legion's brutal descents into battle became legendary. They caused atmospheres to burn, and made such ruin of the skies on some worlds that the storms they would cause would not abate for years. Where the Storm Lords walked, cities were shattered and battlefields were swept of the enemy in a blistering hail of ordnance. After campaigning for six decades at the forefront of the Great Crusade, the Legio Tempestus, as one might expect, had suffered a lot of losses, and needed some time to regroup and repair or risk total destruction. Having claimed warden right over the worlds of the Esteban and Orestes systems, 
Cavalerio decided to return to Mars, bringing with him all the god engines that required repair and resupply. In his absence, he entrusted command of what was left of the Legio to a princeps Maximus Carania. Thus would begin a chain of events that would lead to a growing rift, more a development of circumstance and distance than any actual acrimony or malice, between the two elements of the Legio Tempestus. In the following years, two separate commands developed, with little direct contact between them. Each one supplied separately and fighting their wars apart, under the light of distant suns. The Martian Tempestas began to be deployed as a heavy reserve, called into battle from their base on Mars to reinforce the line in some precarious war zones, or to punish some rebellious worlds before swiftly returning home. At the same time, Karania's command would pass from one expedition fleet to another. At the beginning of the 31st millennium, the climate on Mars was one of great discontent. There were tense relations between the various Technomagi. There were sporadic outbreaks of violence and espionage being committed among the four cities of the planet. There were even unconfirmed suspicions that the Titan legions had already chosen a side in the case of a potential civil war. Princeps Senioris Cavalerio sought to keep the legion free of the insidious poison of the Mechanicus politicking. He believed that the Titan legions should remain true to their warrior ideals, and not be instruments of the Magi's political will, serving only the interest of the Imperium itself. When the Schism of Mars began during the opening days of the Horus Heresy, the Legio Mortis forces, led by Princeps Camulos in the towering Imperator Titan Aquila Ignis, moved to threaten the Legio Tempesta stronghold at Ascreus Mons. The Death's Heads trespassed on the Legio Tempesta's territory, violating all the agreements signed between the rival Legios several centuries prior. Although the Legio Tempestas had the right to open fire on the invading war machines, Princeps Cavalerio didn't dare do so, as his forces would stand no chance against the awesome power of the Imperator Titan. A standoff occurred in front of the Ascreus Casmata, and although not one shot was fired, the Legio Tempestas war machines were struck by a scrap code attack which resulted in the death of a number of Legio Tempestus personnel aboard their Titans, as well as destroying Cavalerio's own Titan, the Victorix Magna. After this devastating hacking attack, the Legio Mortis retreated from the Legio Tempestus territory. As a result of the death of his Titan, Cavalerio had to be interred in an amniotic tank which required a long period of psychological adjustment to become comfortable with his new existence. During that period, Cavalerio was deemed unfit to command the Legio, and Princeps Kel Sharak assumed his duties temporarily as acting Princeps Senioris. Cavalerio did eventually recover, while the conflict on the surface of Mars only escalated. Although Princeps Sharak received many petitions from Mechanicus Forge cities, Asking the Legio Tempestas to intervene, he acceded to none of them, believing that such an order could only come from the Storm Lord himself. Now facing the gravest crisis in the Legio's history, Princeps Cavalerio felt that warriors of honor and courage should not stand idly, but act instead. He assembled his units and proclaimed that the Legio Tempestas would go to war, with him in command of the god machine Deus Tempestus. And so, they sallied forth in support of Magma City, a loyalist forge that stood in defiance of the corrupt fabricator general Kelbor Hal. Unfortunately, they would be overwhelmed by superior numbers and firepower of their rivals. But despite those odds, the Storm Lord fought valiantly in the destruction of many Death Head's lesser machines, only to finally face his own destruction along with the rest of his forces at the hands of the Imperator Titan Aquila Ignis. The heroic deeds performed in that final battle will never be fully honored, for many of those that witnessed them had died themselves right there, as Magma City sunk into the Red Planet's fiery mantle. After the tragedy on Mars, there remained just a scattered handful of loyalist Legio Tempestus units, which were not present on Mars at the time free and in imperial service, but leaderless and bereft. 
even worse. They were soon to face the double blow of the news that their distant brothers had themselves turned traitor. While leading his own division of the Legio Tempestus, Carania would prove himself a very good strategist, whose cunning served as a formidable force multiplier and elevated the Legio to the highest tiers of the Archdouchebag servants. This rise in favor, however, was always kept in check, for their oldest foe, the Legio Mortis, would always remind all the other traitor titan legions that they were first in Horus' service. There are no records of the Legio Tempestus engaging in any other major action during the reminder of the Horus heresy, although it is presumed that they continued fighting on. At some point in their later history, the treacherous elements of the Legio Tempestus, which now refer to themselves as Legio Tempestor, were present at the Siege of Terra, but when the War Master died they were driven outwards towards the Eye of Terror along with the rest of all the traitors during the Great Scouring. And there they remained, trapped in servitude to the Dark Gods, fighting their long war. The current whereabouts of the Legio Tempestor are unknown. However, the loyalist Legio Tempestus was later relocated to the world of Orestes, located in the Segmentum Pacificus. Their most recent action was participating in the Sabbat World's Crusade in the 41st millennium, to which their homeworld contributed much war material by virtue of its close proximity to the theater of operations. The Sabbat World's Crusade War Master's constant request for supplies and the support of the Legio Tempestus would drain the world of resources and left it weak, rendering it a perfect target for Archon Erlok Gore, the commander of the forces of chaos in the Sabbat World sector. When the attack finally came, Orestes was saved only with the support of the Legio Invicta, which was only passing nearby on its way to join the forces of the Crusade in the Sabbat front. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the history of the Legio Tempestus for today. Just like I said in the beginning, there will be another video on the Legio Tempestus, where we're gonna talk a bit more about their doctrine, their early capabilities, and some other campaigns they took part in. Nevertheless, they are a loyal and worthy force, and their sacrifice and tragedy during the Horus Heresy deserves to be respected. Did you know about the Legio Tempestus before? Are they among your favorite Titan units? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do share your thoughts or opinions on them in the comments below if you want. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects